Welcome back to the Sixth Gear Garage, where I'm currently working on restoring this $350 Acura Legend. In the last episode, we looked at the damaged clear coat, and I showed how to prep the surface and then apply a new color and clear. However, doing this in a residential garage and not a paint booth resulted in some dirt in the finish as well as some orange peel on the hood. So today I'm going to show how to wet sand that surface to get it perfectly smooth again and then polish it to a finish that looks as good as it did the day it left the factory. In the last video, we left off after I finished painting the car and let it cure for a week. There was a little orange peel on the roof, a thick tape line on the A-pillar where I forgot to blend the clear, pretty heavy orange peel on the whole hood, and a big run on the fender, and a run on the bumper as well. The first thing I did was try wet sanding with 2000 grit in a few areas to see if that would be aggressive enough. I'm going to stop here and show you why this isn't going to work. I'm barely taking down any of the orange peel with the 2000 grit. See all that glossy paint still? That would all be dull if it was sanded smooth. So this amount of orange peel is going to need a lower grip paper to start with. See that completely dull area right there? That's what I want. I need to start with a more aggressive lower grip paper or I'll be out here for a week sanding this. Next I wrapped some 1500 grip paper on the block and gave that a try. I'm testing the higher grit paper first because the scratches left by the higher grit sandpaper are easier to remove when polishing. Okay, let's take a close look at this area wet sanded with the 1500 grit sandpaper. And it's looking better, but you can still see some reflection in there. All those glossy reflective areas are low points. And that means the surface isn't perfectly flat. If I were to polish this now, it would still end up with an orange peel finish on the surface. Instead of having that glass smooth wet look I showed in the last video when I ran water over the surface. Like I said, I've got a lot of material to remove and I'm going to waste a lot of time trying to get there with 1500 grit paper. I'm going to jump down to 1200. The 1200 grit was just the right amount of abrasive to remove the orange peel, yet not worry about taking off too much of the clear coat. You can see by the cloudy white water running off the hood. That white is the clear coat I've sanded away. I did two passes with the 1200 grit and dried the hood to stop and check for any glossy low points left on the surface. All right, now I'm getting somewhere. This is looking much better, but I do still have some low areas. As you can see, the gloss there. So I'll say one more pass with the 1200 should get me pretty close to smooth. Maybe a little more in some of these areas. Because I have to go back and sand with 1500 and 2000 grit next, so those will remove a little more clear as well. Okay, I've been working on the hood and also the roof. Remember, the orange peel on most of the roof wasn't too bad. There was some dirt in the roof and that created some high points. There's actually one that got knocked down with the 1200 grit right there. You can see it's dull now. Had a lot of high points. There's one. There's another. There was a huge one right there. And unfortunately, that bug is forever a part of the Legends clear coat. It was too far down to wet sand that guy out. Here was that heavy orange peel. I got the doors too with the 1200 grit. Now you might recall this fender and a huge long run uh, off the flare here. It's really more like a giant sag. I'm gonna wet sand this out next. Because this was a thick heavy sag, it took many passes with the 1200 grit paper to get the surface smooth and even. For this, I'm gonna keep using the thicker, more dense sanding block here because the run is on a flat area of the fender. I'll put a link to this block in the description. Notice I'm using my fingers and flexing the block to keep most of the pressure on the run that I want to knock down, instead of the outer edge of the fender that I want to be careful not to sand through. So here it is after much sanding. There's no low glossy spots where the edge of the run was. Oh, actually, I've got one right here. 
I need to sand a little more right there. Here's a better angle. You can see it now. All right. I've sanded everything with the 1200 grit. Here's how it's looking. The top of the roof still has a lot of glossy areas. And that's because I didn't need to sand much there because there wasn't a lot of orange peel. I've got a damp microfiber towel. Let's give this a wipe down and see how it looks. I've got some fresh water in the bucket and it's time to move up to the 1500 grit. I'm getting closer to this trim than I did with the 1200 grit. And that's just to save myself some elbow grease polishing by hand in case I can't get close enough to the trim with the orbital. The higher grit paper leaves finer scratches which buff out easier. So when I do this the final time with the 2000 grit paper, I'll go right up to that trim. So I want to be sure I'm sanding enough to sand down past all the scratches left by the 1200 grit. And I put down plenty of clear coat, so I'm not worried at all about sanding too much. The 1500 grit is less abrasive than the 1200, so I can sand a little longer than I did with the 1200 and still remove less material. I will say there's nothing worse than jumping up through the grits too quickly and then after sanding with 2000 grit and moving on to the polishing, finding out you have some deeper scratches from the earlier grit papers that are too deep to polish out. Then you have to take a couple steps back after polishing and go back to wet sanding. Let's take a break and see how this area is looking so far. This is looking good. So here's the 1200 grit surface, completely dull, no reflection, except for those low spots and what's left of the orange peel. And over here is the result of the 1500 grit. It's so smooth that it actually has a reflection because the scratches from the 1500 grit are so fine compared to the 1200. This is one step closer to a fully polished glossy finish. If I zoom in close, you can still see the fine scratches left by the 1500. And then the very edge by the trim hasn't been sanded at all. Next, I got to work on the fender with the 1500 grit. So I just sanded this flat surface with the 1500 and the stiffer block over here too where it's flat. Now I need to switch to a more flexible sponge for all these rounded edges and contours. So I have this 3M number 20 sponge and you can see it forms to just about any curved surface and that will help me sand surfaces like this fender. I'll have a link to the sponge in the description as well. I'm also wrapping this with a piece of used paper instead of brand new. Just like in the last video, if I'm sanding a raised edge, which are easy to sand through with too much pressure applied, a used piece of sandpaper will be less abrasive and give me more room for error. Yeah, it's taken longer to cut the clear, but the last thing I want to do is sand through the clear on an edge. The rest of the fender isn't too bad. You can see there's a small amount of orange peel. I didn't even touch this with the 1200 grit because I don't need to take it down very much to get it smooth. So I did some quick sanding with the 1500 grit and that was enough. So I've sanded the roof, the hood with 1500 grit, and the fender, all the doors, and the C-pillars. I faded out the sanding toward the bottom. Now, if you remember on the A-pillar, I had a tape line here because I completely forgot that I planned on fading it out. I tried to blend it with sanding, but if you look in the right light, it's still there, right here. So there's the result if you don't use the spot blender. And even though it looks like it's not, it is all the way smooth. It's flush. There's really nothing I can do about it now, except see how it polishes out. Here's the passenger side to show you how it was before. I haven't touched this one yet. Big old ridge there where the new paint meets the old. Let's see what I can do to sand this smooth. I'm starting off with some 1200 grit and I'm trying to keep the pressure on the new paint because I want to bring it down to the factory clear. 
I want to avoid removing the factory clear below the ridge. I better put some tape on the fender edge here. I can easily scuff that by accident and we're through the edge. There we go and keep on sanding. I've got a ways to go yet. Okay, so this side did not go as well as the other side. I've started to go through the new paint, but I'm still not all the way through this ridge quite yet. So I need to avoid this area at all cost and just sand the ridge. Avoid this spot too. I'm using the stiffer block now to only put pressure on the exact point I need, which is that edge. I had been using the softer sponge, which may have been the reason I sanded through in such a large area because it is less precise. Next, I went back with the 1500 grit and finally the 2000 grit. So first I focused here with the 1200, then sanded slightly larger with the 1500 and then did all this with the 2000 grit. And it's a little better now, but I'm still not 100% happy with it. I have to keep reminding myself, this is a $350 car. It's not going to SEMA. It's for channel content. So now I just need to sand everything else with 2000 grit. I started with the roof and you can see I'm going all the way up to the edge now where the roof meets the trim. Then I sanded the whole C pillar along with the door frames. Then I sanded the hood. And as I said earlier, the 2000 is not as abrasive as the 1200 or even the 1500. So I don't have to worry as much about removing too much material as I get up into the higher grits. And some body shops even continue on with 3000 up to 5000 grit, but this isn't a show car and I can remove 2000 grit scratches with the cutting compound and orbital polisher. Next, I gave the car a good cleaning with soapy water and a sponge to remove all of the residue left from the wet sanding. It's essential the car is 100% clean before I begin polishing so I don't end up grinding any dirt or debris into the surface and add scratches while I'm trying to remove them. How the paint looks right now when wet is exactly how it should look after polishing. Here's my orbital polisher. It's a six inch from Riot's Garage. I've done a few paint corrections on my cars with this over the years and I have nothing but good things to say about this polisher. I'll put a link to this in the description. It has variable speed and an extra long cord, which is nice. I love these Meguiar's microfiber pads. This is part DMC6. Link for these in the description as well. They just Velcro right onto the orbital. I already had a nice spread of different gray polishes ranging from heavy cut to light. So I figured I'd give those a try first and maybe save a little money instead of adding more plastic bottles to my detailing cabinet. Some of this stuff is 20 years old. I spent a good amount of time trying the products I already had, testing them out on different areas of the hood. And although some worked a little better than others at removing some of the scratches, none of the compounds were aggressive enough to remove the scratches left by the 2000 grit paper no matter how many passes I made over the same area. So after wasting an hour, I went in to do some research. And I'm back with this, Meguiar's Mirror Glaze 105 Ultra Cut Compound. This seems to be the go-to among detailing forums for removing wet sanding scratches. Extra heavy cut. This stuff is no joke, so I'm definitely following the instructions. And I also picked up these extra cut discs. They're a little more aggressive than the regular DMC6 microfiber discs I tried before. No built-in padding though. So it's good for flat areas but not a contoured surface. I'll put links to this and this in the description. So here's where I left off last time. I tried products I already had on this part of the hood and that's good progress compared to how it looked when I started but no matter how many times I went over with the orbital, I still had scratch marks here too. And these are sanding marks, not swirl marks. They may not look as bad on camera, but trust me, they're not light at all. Let's give this a shot. Oh, 
Okay, guys. So, I love this stuff. It's easy to use, and it totally works. One last look at the before and after. Just one pass. All the remaining scratches are gone. And there's not even any finer swirl marks left behind. I'm not even going to have to go back over this with a finer compound. This area is done. Just like that. Mere finish. And there's no sponsorship or product placement here. I paid 30 bucks for the bottle and it's worth every penny. I just did the center of the hood. Here it is after two rounds. And the flashlight on iPhones is a great way to check for swirl marks. And I see zero. There's a couple toward the low edge of the area I worked on. One more time with the orbital and it should be golden. Next, I polished the rest of the hood. Three times seemed to be the magic number for removing all the scratches. Then I used the thicker DMC six pad on the fender. Remember, I skipped 1200 and just did 1500 and 2000 here because the orange peel wasn't too bad. And look at it after one pass. All done with the fender. Perfect match from new paint to original paint. I'm applying blue painter's tape on all of the molding and trim before polishing so that I don't end up with any debris from the trim on the microfiber pad, which can end up scratching the paint. And also, I don't want to end up getting polish stuck in the space where the trim meets the paint. It's a lot faster to apply and remove tape than to clean polish and wax from black trim. I'll leave the tape on until I'm through polishing and waxing the finish. Next, I focused on the transition area at the base of the pillar where I had sanded down the tape line. Here we go. Watch the reflection of the window. So smooth. If you look real close, you can barely see a little hint of the tape line where the new paint meets the old. I'm definitely not complaining. These doors turned out beautiful. Look right here on the very edge. I couldn't quite get to that with the orbital. I'll have to do that by hand. I used my finger under a microfiber towel and went back and forth over the area, changing it up between little fine circles and going straight across. And after about four passes, it's looking good. Hey, always make sure that you give any polish or compound a good shake before use. Otherwise, the abrasives can sink toward the bottom over time. I sped up a lot of the polishing footage to keep this short, but here's some real-time video on this unpolished area of the roof to explain the process. Basically, pretend you are a CNC machine. This orbital is set to about 4,000 RPM and I'm just holding it steady, moving from side to side in an overlapping pattern to ensure that every inch of the work area is covered. You can see me lift and angle the orbital slightly to get the pad to reach the very corner. Then I do the same side to side CNC pattern in the opposite direction, perpendicular to the way I went the first time. On these first few passes, I'm keeping moderate pressure on the orbital per the instructions on Meguiar's 105. This helps it cut faster. Then after a couple passes in each direction, I apply less pressure on the last few passes. And then immediately wipe the remaining haze away with the microfiber towel. And here's how it looks after just that first round. There are still some random scratches, so I'll need to repeat that again. But look over here, and it's a night and day difference compared to before. 
So here I am on round two, repeating the exact process you just saw. And here are the results after round two. It's almost there. Only a few very light random scratches in some areas. Some areas don't have any scratches left at all, but one more round should do it. Look at that. Let me get it to focus here. Oh, I do still see a couple real light scratches. And those may actually be deeper seating scratches left from the 1200 or 1500 grit that I didn't fully remove with the higher grit paper. There's another one right here. I'll have to go back and hit those spots again. But overall, you can see the difference from where I started about 10 minutes ago to where the pain is now. I know it's not 100% perfect, but to think I got to this point here, painting this in my garage without a booth and with old equipment and I'm not a pro. I hope this gives you confidence if you're watching this, considering attempting a paint repair yourself. You saw in the last video what I started with. And body shops aren't cheap. Learning to paint is definitely a skill worth investing some time and equipment into if you're a car guy. It'll pay for itself real quick. Notice I'm wearing a mask because this puts a lot of fine dust particles in the air and you don't want those in your lungs. I just did a test spot with the Ultra Cut 105 right here on the original fender and it brought this old oxidized paint back from the grave. I opened the hood since I'm already done with it and I didn't want to accidentally remove any more material from the edge while I was polishing the fender. I used the thinner, more aggressive pad for the roof, but I'm using the thicker DMC6 pad on the curved doors and fenders. Look at that shine. It's so glossy now. I can see dents that I didn't notice before. Once again, the Ultra Cut 105 coming through with amazing results on this neglected factory paint. Remember I had to wet sand some runs on the bumper. And done. The last thing to do is give these freshly polished surfaces a coat of wax to protect them and keep them looking good. This would be the ideal time to apply a ceramic coating for the ultimate protection, but that's a little out of budget for the $350 Legend. Next, I removed all the masking tape from the trim. I'm outside so you can see how good this paint looks. I didn't even repaint the trunk. This is just the original paint brought back with polishing. The roof looking just as good. Here's the original paint for comparison. So much gloss. If you didn't see the last video, I'll put a link in the description. The paint was so bad, faded and flaking off. Now, I'll be proud to drive this. I still have a lot of detail and trim work to do, along with the interior, but that's a future video. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.